Witold Pilecki, an unsung hero of the Holocaust that took a stand against the Nazi regime. During World War II, Witold Pilecki selflessly volunteered to infiltrate Auschwitz, investigate the atrocities committed by the Nazis, and provide information to the Allies, thereby saving many lives and becoming a true unsung hero. Witold Pilecki was born May 13, 1901, in Olyonets, Russia. He was born into a privileged family and lived a fairly normal life. During World War I, Pilecki fought for the Polish army and then for the Polish during the war with the Soviets from 1919 to 1920. During that war, he was twice awarded the Cross of Valor for his heroic actions. After the war, he returned to being a suburban family man who was very active in the community, yet he remained in the reserves. Pilecki also took officer training courses and by 1926 was given the rank of second lieutenant. When Germany invaded Poland in 1939, he was mobilized and participated in the brutal fighting against the German Blitzkrieg. As Poland was swiftly defeated, it quickly disbanded its armies. As a result, Pilecki was instrumental in the creation of the secret Polish army, which was one of the first Polish resistance organizations to be created under Nazi occupation. Prior to the first battles of World War II, the Jewish population in Germany had suffered mass persecution by the Nazi regime. The Nuremberg Laws excluded German Jews from citizenship, made them register their property, and Aryanized their businesses. They were forced to wear the Star of David, which designated them as Jewish. Jews were made out to be inhuman and evil. Hate-fueled persecution led to the Holocaust because of the mass brainwashing of the German people. Furthermore, Polish Jews were forced to live in a rundown section of Warsaw named the Warsaw Ghetto. They were held against their will in deplorable conditions. As a part of the Polish resistance army, Pilecki was informed of the horrible circumstances in the Warsaw Ghetto. Periodically, the Nazis would go into the ghetto and round up Jews. In August of 1940, Pilecki had two fellow officers that were captured and put in the first transport to Auschwitz from the Warsaw Ghetto. An idea was formed in Pilecki's mind. He suggested to his superiors that he enter one of the work camps to gather intel for the Allies on the treatment of prisoners and their specific location. Before one of the roundups, Pilecki acquired the false identity of Tomasz Serafinski. Then, on September 19, 1940, at the age of 39, Pilecki voluntarily allowed himself to be rounded up from the Warsaw Ghetto and sent to Auschwitz. As he was marching up to the camp with the others, Nazi soldiers told one of the prisoners to go to a guard post that was slightly off the trail. The man proceeded to walk in that direction and was subsequently shot in the back for trying to escape. Nazi guards also chose 10 people from the marching groups and executed them as part of collective responsibility. Once Pilecki was in the camp, Pilecki was given the inmate number of 4859. Pilecki was then signed to Block 17A. He began to set up the first of his fives. Fives were the structure of Pilecki's spy organization in which there was one leader and four other regular members. He set up many fives within the camp, but made sure that not one five knew of another five as to lower the risk of betrayal. The goal of the fives were to raise morale, acquire additional rations of clothing and food, send information out of the camp, and then prepare for a possible uprising with the hopes that paratroopers would take over the camp. Politsky's first job was in the carpentry shop. Not a carpenter by trade, this made things difficult for him, but provided him access to more resources. The year 1940 in Auschwitz ended with Pilecki trying to survive day by day. Although exhausted and incredibly weak, he avoided death by starvation, disease, exhaustion, or various types of execution. Eventually, Pilecki became seriously ill and was forced to go to the hospital. In the hospital, the battle was not his illness, but the swarms of lice eating away at him. However, he managed to survive with the aid of another prisoner who killed the lice that covered his body. In addition to the fives, Pilecki organized an underground union 
of military organizations called Zhao. Through the help of Zhao's members who worked in the hospital, he eventually made it out alive. Politsky continued to expand the Fives and his Zhao organization. In addition to Politsky's efforts, all of his organization's members worked tirelessly helping each other and anyone that needed it. Politsky risked his life time after time and several times narrowly escaped being exposed. When 1941 drew to a close, Zhao had over 80 members within the camp. Ultimately, Politsky had to switch to a different job within the camp, the carving workshop. Not a carver by trade, he yet again had to make do. Politsky got a job in a tannery outside of the camp. While marching there one day, he became introspective and pondered the circumstances that led to the dichotomy of life in Germany. Marching along the gray roads toward the tannery in a column raising clouds of dust, one saw the beautiful red light of dawn shining on the white flowers in the orchards and on the trees by the roadside. Or on the return journey we would encounter young couples out walking, breathing in the beauty of springtime, or women peacefully pushing their children in proms. Then the thought uncomfortably bouncing around in one's brain would arise, swirling around, stubbornly seeking some solution to the insoluble question, were we all? People. Outside of the camp, Plutsky led his men to hide a radio transmitter in the post office as a way to provide information to the Allies. Broadcasting at different times made it very difficult to be caught. However, after seven months, they had to take it apart due to a betrayal by a member of the Zhao. In March, the Nazis started to bring women into the camp. They were immediately gassed. In addition, a new method using phenol injections was brought in to help with the killings. Inmates were told they were receiving vaccinations. The needle went in, and they died in less than a few minutes. The Nazis took things from those who were killed, and eventually called these piles of things Canada. The term stuck for anything they did not take, but the inmates could. Politsky and some of his high-ranking members eventually began to develop a course of actions, Politsky sent one of his reports through a member, who with the help of a few others, managed to escape. Again, Politsky had switched jobs, first to the parcel office checking packages, then later to the bakery. With each job change, he was able to develop more connections, and his network of spies grew to well over 150 members. Finally, in April of 1943, Politsky escaped the camp and returned to his home army unit. There, he provided his superiors with his last report and information on the Germans. The information provided was instrumental regarding the camp's operation and movements within. As World War II was coming to an end, Politsky fought in the 1944 Warsaw Ghetto Uprising and was one of the main heroes of the rebellion, holding the city's east-west thoroughfare and Jerusalem Alley. The rebellion allowed numerous Jewish underground resistance fighters to escape the ghetto. However, once the uprising was crushed, Politsky was detained by the Nazis and sent to a prisoner of war camp where he remained until the end of the war. Prior to Politsky's heroic actions, the Allied forces were not completely informed about the atrocious crimes against humanity being committed. Vitold Politsky's heroic actions led him to be able to expose what the Germans were really doing to the prisoners at Auschwitz. He was able to smuggle out important and previously unknown information about the camp. Intel, such as the killing methods, treatment of prisoners, and the specific locations were provided. Politsky also established a resistance organization within the camp, which was able to boost morale, help the sick and injured, distribute extra food, and made sure his comrades survived. The group also gave news to the members from the outside about events unfolding during the war. Politsky's organization gave the Allies valuable information and helped convince the Americans to join the fight. Even after the war, Politsky continued to serve as a spy against the communist government in Poland. He gathered information for the Polish government in exile. Unfortunately, his cover was eventually blown and he was put on trial by the Soviets. Politsky was sentenced to death, and on May 25, 1949, he and three of his comrades were executed. 
Witold Pilecki, a true unsung hero of World War II, selflessly volunteered to infiltrate Auschwitz and investigate the atrocities committed by sending information to the Allies, thereby taking a brazen stand against the Nazi regime. While in Auschwitz, he set up a resistance organization that hoped to expose the truths about the work camp to the Polish army and the Allied forces. Pilecki's actions made him a symbol for bravery and valor during the Holocaust. Pilecki saved many lives throughout his life. In doing so, he has had an everlasting impact on history. He was an unsung hero who fought against the evils that he did not believe in and fought for what was right. Pilecki was an inspiration for those who dare to fight against fascism and crimes against humanity, and will forever be remembered for his heroic actions. In modern-day Poland, he is perceived as a hero, with schools and monuments named after him to remember him by. Today, he is remembered as a hero that inspires bravery in the face of injustice and that one should take a stand against those who symbolize evil in the human form.